I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses for a living and I read a lot of papers um, as part of the uh, ASV's COVID-19 registry. We have to like look through all the papers that come out and pick out which ones seem like they're going to be the most meaningful or impactful. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically my job to know this stuff. So all right, let's uh, bring some of that knowledge uh, to bear on your questions. Uh, the first question uh, here is from Port. Yeah, yeah. Or that's what you're calling your uh, Facebook account. And whatever. Yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> um, hi, Dr. Ben. I saw a person post this article, and I was wondering if you had seen this yet. I find it off kilter and uh, wanted to get an actual professional opinion. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for what you do in weeding out the false stories. Well, let's see. So I clicked on this thing. It um, is about the renowned European scientist. And right there, you've got the first problem. So I would characterize this article as uh, this is an outsider with an outsider perspective, um, probably doesn't have any specific knowledge. Probably the sort of person, if you asked him to name three proteins from the uh, coronavirus, or two proteins, but you know, other than the spike protein, they would probably struggle, or to tell you how it grows, or anything like that. Um, uh, so this is a person who is from Italy and has decided, uh, yeah, that uh, let's see, that the virus was engineered in China, which a real scientist would need evidence and there hasn't been any evidence and all the things that have been brought up as evidence like the furin cleavage site are actually really common in coronaviruses these are, these are just things that happen all over the place all the time without any human intervention um, this is the power of evolution and viruses evolve faster than anything else that's biological on this planet so yeah um, it's kind of a like a calibration issue if you're an outsider and you don't know anything about a subject, then you look at something and say, "Whoa, that seems like that seems like it's you know uh, significant." But once you are kind of inside the subject, you see the same thing all the time, and you can say that, "No, no, no, that's not significant. That's super common. It's just the way this group of viruses and actually a lot of viruses work. They just, yeah." Um, so something like a furin cleavage site, you can make one in any protein. Um, you have to put in maybe, you might have to change or add three amino acids. Um, and usually arginine would be the best way to do that. That's a particular amino acid. And so, uh, yeah, RRAR, if I remember right, is the uh, furin cleavage site. Or maybe it's RARR, -R -R, like RAR, RAR. I, I forget where the accent is. <laughs> Um, but for uh, SARS coronavirus 2, and then there's a serine after that, and between the last R and the uh, S, that's where the cut is, between the arginine and the serine. Yeah, um, yeah. these happen in flu viruses, they happen in so many viruses, something like half of the coronavirus spikes or more have one of all coronaviruses, of like fish and birds and whatever. So, <laughs> no, this is uh, goofy. And uh, Professor Wingnut here also uh, says that an effective vaccine is unlikely, which maybe, maybe not. But once again, an outsider wouldn't have any particular perspective that would be useful on this subject. Um, so he's an internationally known expert. So, okay, internationally known. I mean, who? yeah, whatever. I figure if you've made a blog post, you could claim to be internationally known whether you are or not. <laughs> he has written a book and that's where all this stuff is. Um, and I don't know if this is uh, part of press from the book or if somebody's read the book and actually admires it, that could be uh, as well. Yeah. But um, there's nothing, there's nothing that would be considered like defensible science. Like if you were going for your PhD and you pulled out this stuff, they'd say, cool, cite your sources. Where do you get these crazy ideas? Why, you know, why don't you know about all the other times in nature that these same things happen? And uh, in a sense, yeah, I, I'm not sure you did a great job. <laughs> um, but um, the other problem is that they, uh, they list them as an expert in biotechnology and nanotechnology. And neither of those words is virology. And even if it was virology, there are a lot of viruses out there and they're all really different to each other. 
And if you haven't been swimming around in the coronavirus pool for a while, there's just going to be stuff that you don't know because you're incompetent and you're good at other stuff. You're just bad at this particular thing. So that's that's what this uh, guy is. He's uh, he's just bad at this. And um, yeah, from the first sentence, you can kind of see what they're aiming for here. Um, it will not be possible for the Dr. Fauci's of the world to dismiss. So we're we're it's it's like a political thing. They're they're trying to. I think it's called dog whistling. It's just yeah, this is um, it's nonsense and uh, yeah. I don't see anything in the press release. I haven't read the whole book. Yeah, because life's too short. Um, but I haven't seen anything in the press release that uh, is backed up at all um, by anything real or is. Um, legitimate cause for concern so there you go yeah but whatever yeah this is, he's living his best life and so you know, <laughs> just <laughs> smile and nod and don't buy his book and uh yeah i don't know it'll go away <laughs> they all do yeah, he's just making a little splash right now thanks very much this is dr ben these are my professional opinions